When we first started planning this trip and started discussing our destinations with people who lived or had visited there in the past, we were met with the same phrase over and over again. Don't bother going to X, there is no wildlife. And there have been a couple of places where this has been not true, but the wildlife has definitely been more difficult to find. The first such location where we expected to find a great deal of wildlife and really didn't see a lot was Italy, an area I'd visited as a child and remembered being quite rich and diverse with wildlife. Eventually though, by luck, judgment, or frankly desperation, we found our way to, and apologies in advance to anyone who lives in Italy or otherwise speaks or understands Italian, the Strada Boschetto Playa in Catania. This small strip of nominally green space is bordered on one side by an airport and industrial estates, and on the other by hotels and lidos. And yet it is proof positive that if you just look, you can find wildlife anywhere. Immediately notable on entering the park is a large artificial lake. Which contained what initially appeared to be animatronic rocks, but were, of course, turtles. In this particular instance, yellow-bellied sliders. Although, from a conservation perspective, perhaps the rocks might have been preferable, as, in Europe at least, yellow-bellied sliders are invasive and really quite devastating to local ecosystems. Most of the individuals present on this lake, though, did not seem to be particularly interested in expanding ranges and were generally just sunning themselves and stretching. That being said, the presence of a predator of sorts spooked most of them back into the water with the notable exception of this individual that was, in fact, playing the intimidation game with a small dog. And one. No discussion of the wildlife of Southern Europe would be complete without the inclusion of lizards. While mostly quite small, the species can grow up to 20 centimetres in length and <laughs> aiding in their identification will vary wildly from one individual to the next in their coloration and pattern. Although they do fall into six distinct morphs based on the coloration of their undersides, which good luck seeing if they don't want you to. Just as unique as the coloration of each individual lizard is their personalities. And as much as I'm sure it sounds unusual to say that an individual lizard can have an individual character, they really do seem to. Some will sit quite comfortably and allow you to film them up close. Others will scatter as soon as you show any awareness of their presence or even simply exist in their vicinity. Of course, it does have to be said that even if there is not any large or ostentatious wildlife in an area, even small species can display unusual behaviours if you pay enough attention. Take, for example, the slopes of Mount Etna. This is not a place I expected to do a lot of wildlife filming. In fact, it was supposed to have been a day off. But it rapidly became apparent that the volcanic rock around us was covered in ladybirds, particularly the seven spot ladybird, which is very common throughout Europe and was once so in the UK, although it is currently apparently being outcompleted by the harlequin ladybird. 
every individual we saw on Etna was either mating or attempting to do so, which does give some hope for the proliferation of the species in mainland Europe. And perhaps there's something about volcanic soil in general that is appealing to insects and arthropods, because these wood ants filmed on the slopes of Vesuvius seem to be doing very well for themselves. Since the colony was spread over a wide area and there were a large number of ants quite aggressively defending their territory. And on the topic of paying close attention, this grasshopper has the most striking blue underwings, admittedly visible for all of six frames. My final and most tangible lesson in where to look for wildlife in Italy came from the Bay of Naples. I'm sure by now that anyone who's paid any attention to British social media in the first half of 2023 is aware that Britain's waterways are polluted to a truly staggering, if not terrifying degree. And accordingly, if there is any wildlife present, it is incredibly difficult to see through the muck, shall we say. I had expected that this actually was just an endemic issue affecting cities. And make no mistake, there are some dirtier patches of water in the Bay of Naples, which perhaps now I might be less likely to swim in than I had been previously. But if you take the time to find the right spot and have a helpful guide to point you in the right direction, you can find beautifully clear waters teeming with a diverse array of fish life. And I do very much hope I will have the opportunity to do more snorkeling work in the future.